Hi, I'm Alexis Lane with Lane Design Studio. I am a licensed interior designer here in Austin, Texas, and also a green design expert. Now, you've probably seen in the news that there have been a lot of wildfires here in Texas uh, with record-breaking home loss. In Bastrop alone, we've lost over 1,500 houses, which literally just burned to the ground with nothing left. Um, usually, with wildfires, it's not a huge wall of flame that takes over your house. It's embers from a nearby fire, or a fire even a mile away, that land on your roof, or in your gutters, or find a way into your wall somewhere, and that's where the fire starts, and that's what destroys your house. So, there are things that you can do to make your house fireproof to prevent complete loss from a wildfire. There are actually five things you can do. For starters, you want to make sure that the structure of your house is built with fire-resistant materials. You don't want to use traditional stick framing, which is wood 2x4s. That's literally building your house out of matchsticks in a state that has wildfire season, which is not very smart. What you could do instead is use insulated concrete forms, or ICFs. What these are are polystyrene blocks, which fit together like Legos to form the shell of your house. These forms are then filled with concrete. Now, ICFs are about 1-4% to more than traditional stick framing. However, it's Class A fire rated, which means it will withstand up to 2-4 to four hours of contact with fire before it fails. It's also so good at insulating that your energy bills will be a lot lower in your house and you'll recoup that money. ICFs are actually used in a lot of Energy Star rated buildings because they are so energy efficient. So, insulated concrete forms are one of the most important things you can do to make your house fireproof. Now, Having fireproof walls is nice, but the second thing that you need to do is have a fireproof roof. You don't want to use wood shingles. That's also another rather stupid thing to do. The best fireproof materials for your roof are stone, metal, or concrete tiles. They're all naturally fire resistant. Now if you don't have the money for that, a good alternative is fiberglass-based asphalt shingles. They're all really good. They're Class A fire rated, which means that they will withstand direct contact with fire for two to four hours before something goes horribly wrong and the fire works its way into your house. So The third thing you want to think about is the siding, the material that's going onto the side of your house. You can use stucco, brick, stone, or if you really have your heart set on the look of wood siding or shingles, you can use a fiber cement clapboard or shingle, which is also Class A fire rated. Stone and stucco will hold up to fire for an hour before it gets to the structure of your walls, which hopefully is the insulated concrete form. So, with all of those things built up, you could have four or five hours of fire resistance, which, in a fast-moving wildfire, it could flash right over your home and leave it completely intact, which is what you really, really want. The important thing here, though, is you don't want any holes for embers or small flames to find their way into. So. Any vents, like dryer vents leading to the outside of your home, any gable vents where your roof kind of meets and there's a little window or a hole, um, or any soffit vents, you want to cover with 1 8 inch 
metal mesh, which will keep embers out and keep fire from having an entry point into your home. Another important thing is do not use acrylic skylights. If there's a fire nearby, that acrylic, instead of glass, is going to melt almost immediately, leaving a huge hole in your roof for fire to get inside and catch your furniture on fire, or your wallpaper, or your carpet. So do not use acrylic skylights. They will melt and leave a huge hole, which is horrible, horrible, horrible. If you have decking or a patio outside, use composite decking, which is a fireproof material, instead of wood because your decking can dry out, especially if it's wood, and it's going to serve as fuel for a fire. So, composite decking. If you have a crawl space underneath that decking, you need to cover that with 1 8 inch metal mesh to keep any embers from working their way under your house and starting a fire. The last thing you want to think about is your actual windows because everywhere you've got a window or a sliding door is a potential hole for fire to get through. So you want something that's going to hold up to intense heat of a fire if it's in your front yard. So you want double or triple pane windows because those are going to hold up a lot longer than a single pane window is going to. You also want to think about using tempered glass which will hold up to a higher heat for longer than simple plate glass windows will. So all of these put together will add up and make your home almost entirely fireproof. Now, no house is 100% fireproof. There's always something that can go wrong. However, you can greatly increase your chances of having your house survive a wildfire. The better it's built, the better you have a chance of being evacuated from your home and coming back to find it okay. You don't want to be one of the people that gets released back into your neighborhood to find absolutely nothing where your house used to be. So please, please, please think about fireproofing your home. Um, there's also, so I forgot to mention, residential sprinklers. You can have sprinklers installed in your home that look just like small metal discs on your ceiling. That could be the difference between holding off the fire until the fire department gets there to put it out for you, or having your house go up in flames completely and having nothing left. So. For more information, you can visit my website at lanedesignstudio.com. It's just www.lanedesignstudio.com. You can check out our design blog, Austin Style, and get more information and downloads on what you can do to fireproof your home. Thank you.